Welcome back to the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel, another stream of consciousness style edition where we answer your most sought after relevant timely questions as they exist around the Florida real estate market, relocation and beyond. Today, I'm excited about this one. This is what I would deem like a domino episode of sorts. This is a mountain out of a molehill, 10 birds, one stone, four topics that I cover in long form that on the surface seem like they could be about one neighborhood or narrow. But if looked at correctly, it really is like, I mean, it's macro, it's micro, it's everything in between, just really vague, ambiguous items that are so, so valuable for not just the people that honed in on this one, but all of the rest. It's a crash course of education in Southwest Florida, in my opinion. I uh, really hope you enjoy that. My name is Adam Hancock. Bunch of free resources in the description box below. Uh, we can help you in the real estate market. We have a private community group. Website has a ton of stuff on it. Check all that out. I explain it all in uh, outro at the end of the video. And without further ado, let's hop in. All right, the first subject I'd like to hit in this particular video is about the Sky Ranch new construction community in central uh, Sarasota, Florida by mostly Taylor Morrison Homes. And I've been asked about this one a ton lately. So I feel like timing is not only of utmost importance to people, so I want to get that in there. But secondly, as I was working through how to articulate this one particular subject to, to you guys, you know, I feel like it sneaks into more value than I originally thought. Not only am I going to cover the narrow basis of what this community means to the general area that surrounds it, the investability, the pricing, and how you should think about the location, all those kind of things, but also this kind of gives you a sneaky crash course to education in Southwest Florida as a whole of this one particular area. So just keep that in mind. It's kind of a domino, 10 birds, one stone effect. All right, this is one for me that you really need to take two steps back, probably to take three forward from a historical context perspective. Because, you know, Sky Ranch, granted, has years to go as far as this master plan build out, like any of these thousand plus uh, home neighborhoods do in the current era, right? These could take five to eight years to build out, but it's not brand spanking new. It's not six months old. You know, I don't know the exact date of its origin, but I believe I was talking about this on YouTube in late 2020, definitely in 2021. But what it was then, as far as like ambiguity versus what it was now, a complete world's difference. Because when people came into town, and we still do this to this day, you know, we really do this kind of three-headed monster juxtaposition of Lake Ranch versus Venice, like suburb, suburb, materially different from each other, coastal, inland, one's bigger, one's smaller. This was before well and it was even super mature. And then we say, what else can you do? And that's the middle. That's basically a northern border of like the Brecon and artistry by culture where Worthington is as well. Southern's like, you know, you could say like the Grand Parks of the world. And then you got you know, parallel to Siesta Key, you have Sky Ranch just getting going. And people don't really know what it is. A couple different neighborhoods, Taylor Morrison, there's some custom building going on. And it was blocked. People went to the other two. They got their head around it. Lake Ranch looks like it does online. Well, and even at its infancy, you still had like coastal Venice. You could get your head around. You had the West Village's old district. And then you went to the middle and you saw these couple new spotty neighborhoods that it looked like builders just did because they could. It looked like just another one on the surface. All the builders were very different and it just didn't have a place where it held weight for people. They didn't. It was mature neighborhoods that surrounded new stuff that was even priced in a way and positioned in a way that didn't make sense versus the other options. Because at that time, you're in Lakewood Ranch in the heyday of like bidding and hysteria from post-COVID and net migration at the utmost of history. But what you had is you had Waterside at very, very early infancy. So you're talking Lake House Cove by Homes by Town plus Custom. You're talking Pulte's community, um, Shoreview, which is like nice Pulte, that a great piece of land. And then um, Windward by Neal Community is one of the newest outfits down there, which was really, really popular at the time. But other, like you didn't have anything on the other side of Lorraine, you had the founders club in front of it, not a lot to deal with, right? So you went down there and it was just like, if it didn't work, it didn't work. There was no Taylor Morrison South. And then you start working your way up to old school Lakewood. It was very expensive. So Country Club West and East, you had the Lake Club, you had the Isles emerging. Um, you're working your way up. It's still like old school Lakewood. And the newest district that was competing with the new water side was the Northeast Quadrant of Lakewood Ranch. And what all that was at the time was pretty much Sapphire Point, which is more pulty. You had Lorraine Lakes coming along. You had more Lennar than that. You had Lakewood National, Polo Run. Uh, Sweetwater didn't exist yet. You had Savannah up above it that was kind of like in the conversation a little bit with Meritage. And then you had Esplanade Azaria, which was the bell of the bull. Esplanade Azaria, which is, is the sister really to Sky Ranch as far as like age and stuff. Um, it had, you know, golf, beautiful amenities planned. Great. I mean, they had like seven, eight models you could see. 
they're selling like 90 foot plats for like the first time in forever with like the Beacon and the Lincoln. They got 76 in there, bunch of good lots. Pricing was like, this is depressing to talk about if you're in that market. But there, you used to be able to do like, we used to do a lot of Lazio Palazzo floor plans, like 2200, the best of 2200 square feet, the best of like 31, 29 to 3100. And then versus like the Beacon and the Lincoln. But you could get base floor plans of the, the Palazzo, I think were like, 580, maybe 480, no, 485, non-golf. I believe you can go Plazio, ba Plazio base, believe it or not. And then Lazio was even cheaper than that. They were in the threes when I was touring people back in the day. So you're looking at all of that when basically people compared Windward to, and I don't want to get too crazy here, but I think this is important. Windward to Esplanade Rosario, right? And everything in between was just like, if you were from out of state, that, that's how you looked at Waterside versus Upper. And then that part of Lakewood Ranch didn't seem really far to you at the time. Because it was always like, if you're going to go out to the 45-minute one-way to the beach area, you need to get a big benefit for doing so. So you got the best amenities that were offered at the time. And some of the best in all of Sarasota County, Manatee County combined for doing that. And you got golf. And it was it was unbelievable offering, right? And there was nothing really to compare. So then your comparison to the rest of town, right? Sky Ranch was brand, brand new. But they were pricing it based on... Uh, it being a better location in town. That's how Taylor Morrison thought of it, right? So you were going up to Esplanade Azario and you were seeing like the, the the greatest of the great. Everybody's competing with it and you could actually see a lot of stuff, right? Because they had an infrastructure. You're going to brand new Sky Ranch, which was mostly Casilla, not even a big Esplanade presence there yet. And and they were pricing a lot of the models more expensive than what you got at Azario. So people were like, how does that make sense, right? But it makes a lot more sense in 2024. And then you're going down to Venice and you had Grand Palm that was east of 41, in the West Villages district with Neil, that was kind of like a peacock. You had no Playmore district at all. Um, at the very earliest, they were selling the, the Playmore district in theory. There was no models you could walk whatsoever. So they were selling Solstice by Toll Brothers and some of the Neil stuff at other model centers that were like in different locations, right? And so it was just more clear cut when you hopped around all those and you were like, what's the best mousetrap? And backed by a ton of urgency, whether it was perceived or not, that it feels like you had to make a decision or you're going to miss out severely, then there wasn't a lot of compelling reasons to do Sky Ranch. So now if we take a quick fast forward to present day, April 2024, we have a material amount of changes to look at. So one is Waterside, right? You go from three, maybe three communities. A lot of people didn't even consider when we're technically Waterside, even though it's right there, to 10 plus. So more builders to choose from. Um, you have more water access, both sides of Lorraine now. So large water exists on both sides. There's hyper unique luxury there's more coming soon and they even added affordability in perspective and also uh, alternative housing townhomes investability villas all that kind of thing go back up to that same northeast quadrant and one esplanade is already what i went to depth with with taylor morrison is way more expensive than it used to be not saying that that's wrong with the present day market necessarily it's just saying that something that was 600k is now 1.1 million so you need to be a lot more poised in your decision up if you want to really understand the value, you need to understand a lot more about the geography and the other things you could do versus it just being a slam dunk. They've also added a lot more stuff up in the upper part of Lake Ranch to choose from. And then even Parrish is kind of kicking a little bit. You go back down to Venice and what's really different than three years ago is one, the Playmore district is one of the most in vogue master plan concepts in the entire state of Florida by far right. One of the most asked about, one of the most popular, still relatively affordable, but now you have infrastructure. So you get down there. They're not just talking about downtown's coming. You know, you can see it all. So you know exactly what you got. And that's a big part of this conversation. You know, you have Wisteria with Neil, Avelina with Neil, Sunstone with Madame. You have Solstice with Toll Brothers, I mentioned. You have Grand Place, unique Sam Rogers custom. Brightmoor is one of the most exciting madame based 55 and up communities to exist. It's going to be unbelievable amenities. Um, a lot of affordability and perspective. It gives an option versus Del Webb in a lot of markets. Um, you still have Boca Rail for golf. Uh, down in Englewood that's really close to the beach. You have all of the West Villages district that's still buying resale and Welland Park Golf and Country Club with Lennar. That's, you know, it's just crazy. And all of that's like 18 minutes or less to four beaches with Venice and Minnesota Key. And then Central Sarasota is still kind of like not a ton there, but but a lot more plans of what it's going to be. You know, and this isn't counting North Venice or Nicomas or anything going there. But like the big thing here is that you might still have Sky Ranch and Artistry and still have these same players, right? But there's huge plans for the, a third suburb, basically. Not just Lakewood versus Venice suburb anymore. 
uh, slightly east of Interstate 75, parallel to the beaches where um, Sky Ranch exists. Tons of plants. You have High Hint Ranch. You have a lot, a lot of land before you get out to Mayaka. And the plan is to fill that in with what they've done in the past. Laker Ranch is hooking around. So all of that to say, a lot, a lot of words to say that now when you go to make a decision, I feel like you know way more cards. And if I'm trying to make any decision, this is about taking out the big element. If you, if you know more information of what it's potentially going to be and what it's at now, then you could actually choose what you would prefer, what's best for you and your family with a lot more risk mitigation of the bottom falling out from under you. Okay, and that is my very long-winded but hopefully helpful way of getting to the geography conversation itself. And if I am looking at pure economics, uh, investment intelligence is my main marker for purchasing in Sarasota, Florida's general metro, Manatee and Sarasota County combined. I would want the best of what Sarasota is known for in the old school regime and in the new. I'd want it all. I'm looking for to hedge bets and stack favor to mitigate risk, not to win the lottery. I'm not looking for some chance of where I guessed really, really early. I'm looking for more can't misses. And the old school version of what is the paradise, it's why did Sarasota even get on the map versus like its central location to Florida? It exists in like a magical triangle in my mind. If you could pick to be close to anything at all, where it'd be hard to lose in totality, you could argue this across the whole state of Florida. It's between downtown inland, so downtown Sarasota, which is kind of north in town, Lido Beach and lower Longboat Key to the northwest of it, and upper Siesta Key to the southwest of it. That triangle of this is so much value packed in and then the west of the trail area in between it that you get... You get all of downtown's like really unique cosmopolitan, non-work first, you know, it's a play first, work second kind of district. It is the cultural coast of the state of Florida. So it has the most densely packed in a small geography, theaters and art galleries and music venues and museums and that kind of thing, technically. And then if you go to upper, upper Siesta Key, the key itself, it's seven to eight miles long, but the northern area is what everybody thinks of, right? There's three beaches on that island, but Siesta Key Beach is to the north. It's the northernmost tip. Um, Siesta Key Village, which is the main shopping district beyond Crescent, is, uh, is right next to it. And then the north bridge to get off to go to probably what you'd want to if you had to choose one north or south is, uh, is right there as well. So you can shoot six miles away to downtown Sarasota. And then three and a half miles away, you hit lower the other key. So you hit Lido Key, which then is St. Armand Circle, which is like bougie, John Reenling design, like figure eight, hundred plus shops and boutiques, which is a lot like higher end version of Siesta Key Village, which is way more laid back, approachable, touristy looking thing. And then the very lower tip of Longboat Key, which includes like the Longboat Key Club. And before you get so far on the key that it becomes more isolated and more desolate, all of that's packed in like a six mile square radius, which is what most of the value from Sarasota is on the back of that. It's everybody's trying to get close to it. Eventually all that stuff's built up. It's very coastal, you know, being on the beach is a commitment. So like new construction housing, the suburbs, all of it was an offshoot of it. So all the knocks historically on value were related to how far you got to that cool stuff. And then what they did is they tried to satiate that need. So back in the day, like Lakewood Ranch was so far. If you grew up in Sarasota, if you grew up here, Lakewood Ranch was like the knock on it was like, yeah, I mean, I get why you'd go there to get more space and all that kind of thing. But um, but you got to go to town for everything, right? So the further you got from being far, the worse it was. Well, they tried to satiate that everything but the beach, urban walkability, the shopping districts, the coffee shops, the schools. They tried to say like, how can we give you more reasons not to leave? So that's where you see like downtown Waterside. That's where you see the multiple downtowns of Lakewood, the A-rated public school they put in there, the, the charter stuff, all of that kind of stuff where it's everything but the beach. And then now they're even adding Crystal Water Lagoons, right? You have downtown Waterside, which is in lower the lowest part of Lakewood Ranch, 10, 11 miles, one way to downtown Sarasota, right? So if you're going to be in the suburbs and you had to choose to get close to everything, like you really want to be there if you can choose. And then you have Frugal Commons, which is right below that. So another shopping district, right? Then you have downtown well into the south. And if you said, like, if I had to pick one place, as I digress here, hopefully, <laughs> I have trouble digressing. If I had to pick one place to be, um, what would be the best of those mousetraps, right? Well, look at where Sky Ranch is based. Sky Ranch is 10, 9 to 11 miles, depending on where you're at, um, parallel to uh, Siesta Key. So it's right on the interstate, right? So it gives you new construction suburban housing, 
but it's one of the closest ways to shoot to the old school regime, right? But then look at where it's based on a map, right? It's also, I mean, downtown Waterside's not private. Like Waterside Place is public, right? So is Fruitvale Commons, right? These are t parts of town. So you don't lose Waterside, right? So what's the distance of Sky Ranch to Waterside Place versus Esplanade Azario? Esplanade Azario is part of Lake Ranch. Sky Ranch is not, right? Well, it's compelling to say that Sky Ranch gets access to all the cool new suburban stuff you'd want, and but it doesn't lose the downtown Sarasota stuff where not all suburbs gain access to the new stuff without losing the old. And then it's also like, you know, exit 205, right? On the interstate, it's, I mean, Venice is exit 200. So it's not that far from all the stuff that's going to be happening in North Venice, including probably a Crystal Water Lagoon. And then also downtown Wallen's not that far, right? So I'm not saying that anyone's perfect. I'm just saying if you had to pick central proximity, which is what I would be going for if I was saying like, how could you argue this is a bad value? I'd be making central proximity really high in that weighted formula. And then I would look at builder. Then I would look at cutting out anything weird, anything odd, as far as my list of priorities. All right, let me hit what I think about the community itself real quick on a narrow basis. We'll talk about pricing. I'll let Sky Ranch ride for this video. But um, and I know it was long, but I do think that it, it's that important if I had to pick things to stream of consciousness speak about. This one just means a little bit more than the neighborhood itself. So I hope you found it that way too, or you could skip timestamps if you want to. Um, all right, so Taylor Morrison, the way, this is another cool way to learn is they kind of have the same MO of how they build all their neighborhoods for the most part, at least in Southwest Florida. So they do like a really amenity rich brand and then they do everything else, binary. Esplanade is their amenity rich brand. Most of the time it's their 55 and up active adult kind of position community without technically being classified other than their Wesley Chapel one, which was a special land circumstance. So that you don't have to be 55 or anything like that, but they're really positioned with a lot of single story housing, a lot of stuff that fits in that kind of mold with the pricing and just crazy amenities, right? Even if they don't golf, bars at the pool, restaurant, that kind of thing. Well, look at, uh, so that's what Esplanade Golf and Country Club was in Lakewood. Esplanade Azario was a, just a new version of that. Very similar. Very similar amount of homes, very similar style, golf, almost the same amenities, but newer. And then, but look at Park East. So they put Park East right next to it. Esplanade at Park East, I believe. Uh, right next to it, no gate um to keep the fees down no tile roofs to keep the fees down and look at the floor plan differences right not just different names a lot of two-story lofts en suites upstairs pricing's a little different Re clearly positioned to peacock the rest of the people that want it fit into esplanade both on pricing and criteria it's gonna be a lot more families a lot of the times because you know not a family of four or five can live necessarily in a 2900 square foot million dollar property you know, that's only 60 foot front plane, right? So you need just different, you need different rooms, different models, right? So you kind of get that MO, right? Well, then, you know, look at what they've done at, they, before uh, Sky Ranch, they did Esplanade uh, and Palmer Ranch, very similar. Uh, I think they have the Bahama bar there, but no golf. They did an Esplanade, it's called Esplanade Siesta Key, but it's like close to the key, it's not on it. And then, but you see like Palmero, right? Townhomes, that, that's kind of what they're doing. They're hopping around. If you really look for it, that's what they do, right? They're really trying to apply all of their, every everyone that could buy really, you know, and they do a good job with the floor plan positioning and the pricing in my personal opinion. One of the best at breaking that up. Well, what is Sky Ranch? Sky Ranch to me is they, it's the first time they did it all at once. So Sky Ranch has Casilla. So it's got a lot bigger too. So Sky Ranch is Casilla. Um, Casilla is the park east, right? Casilla is a lot of, and it's a little bit of a combo. Two stories, a lot, really family friendly, even the like events they were doing, the amenities, super family friendly, right? Then they do an Esplanade at Sky Ranch, a lot smaller. There's no golf or anything. Um, I don't think they have a bar at the pool there planned, but they were trying to make it more exclusive, right? They have amenities for the, the Esplanade people. So Esplanade can use Sky Ranch if they haven't changed things recently. They can use the Sky Ranch, uh, the Casilla at Sky Ranch amenities, but not vice versa. So Esplanade can use their own amenities, almost like an adult pool, and they can use Casilla, but the Casilla can't use Esplanade, right? So they're clearly trying to separate that. And they're bringing in floor plans that Casilla doesn't have. So Casilla weirdly added the beacon from Azario um, because they like the size or whatever. But uh, Esplanade has the Palazzo and the Palazzo, which people really, really like. And then they have a, a townhome neighbor that's almost separate than all of these. Like almost HOAs and everything are a little divided. And then they're going to come together for like huge communal amenities, like ballparks, like Turner Park and... There's going to be schools built there, right? So it's almost like everything Taylor Morrison's learned, they're shoving kind of into the whole thing. And then I've heard crazy expansion plans for what they go behind it. And they flirted with maybe adding golf and all that kind of thing. 
But if you look at all of that and you said the location plus that, if if it was present day and you had all the same amenities and golf and everything and Esplanade Azario was where Sky Ranch is based, I don't even think it would be a conversation. Don't even think it would be a question. I don't think anyone's in Esplanade Azario because it's in Lakewood, because it's very, very far north. I think it's because of the community itself, but it becomes less compelling as an alternative if the Sky Ranch community gets a little closer to it. And then with all I'd say about pricing is this is a case of knowing more information is really beneficial, right? Now, if you look at pricing at Sky Ranch, you can know all of the other Esplanade pricing, right? You could have, we could run an MLS search and we could tell you all the resale and all the to be built costs of all the other Taylor Morrison ones. So you can see how the builder prices their own community against itself. And you just have a lot more options to choose from, right? So if there's a price that you're like, oh, this seems expensive, then it really comes down to um, the maturity of the neighborhood and then where the builder is placing its value versus what you think the value should be. So are they placing value on this fake urgency of you should do something now, right? Which wouldn't be the best case for you, but it's also something you could wait out in the current day. Or are they placing their value on um, a location in particular that you can't replicate it? Or is it just somewhere in between? So that's what I'd say about that. I'm done with Sky Ranch for this video. Let's move on. Okay, we're finally on to number two. I'll try to be a little bit more brief with these because you just got the Adam Manifesto. But I was asked by someone if I would speak a little bit more about uh, Parrish, Florida, Englewood, Florida, and also like even like Hi Hat Ranch, um, East Mayaka, the area that's east of central Sarasota, east of the Interstate 75, you know. Um, and what's interesting about putting all of these three in the same conversation is that they're all very, very similar in like different ways. On the surface, they don't seem like they're anywhere near each other, right? But they're the same concept. All of these are fringe communities, in my mind, to what everybody else really wanted. Their plan B or plan C versus the A. You know, Parish, Florida is only on people's radar at all because of Lake Ranch is in front of it. It's junior. Englewood is South Venice. Northport is East Venice. Oh, I just went to this whole thing about how important the Sky Ranch location is to town and to Southwest Florida. Well, Mayaka's further from it. Same parallel. So is Hi-Hat Ranch, right? So technically, if you remove the small amount of people in the world that are actually choosing the further location because of a lifestyle reason, that is the number one criteria is I need acreage or Englewood is like specific to maybe like particular fishing or something, right? In my experience, most people, it's there's a pricing element that's paramount and then they're cool with exploring those avenues if uh, if it also fits for them, but usually they wouldn't have chosen it. Again, broad brush, if they could have chose plan A. So if if that's true, if it wouldn't win out, if Paris would never win out against Lakewood technically, it, or at least you shouldn't do it for resale technically, you can gain a lot of value. That's the key here, is you can gain a lot of value. It's kind of a simpler conversation, is if you're going to do what the minds of the people deem something you shouldn't do, if all was equal, then you should gain something because all is not equal. And a lot of it relates to cost, right? So how much cheaper does Parrish need to be? How much bigger of a house do you need to get? Can you get a pool versus not for it to be worth a 10-mile sacrifice potentially, right? If Venice doesn't quite work, right? And that's a, it becomes simpler because Welland Park is actually very far south. And Venice Island is like a unique animal, right? So if you end up in Englewood, then uh, what are you gaining by doing so? Because you should gain something. You should gain something grand from lifestyle, beach proximity, house, something like that, right? If you purely look at it like that, I think that's the whole reason to learn. You should learn it in juxtaposition against what's near. You shouldn't learn it in a silo. Like just knowing the importance of Parrish or Palmetto or Wamama or Ruskin on their own makes it has no con it has no context to Southwest Florida, right? In my opinion. So then it becomes a lot easier. You're just comparing. And you got to decide for yourself of how big that divide is where you gain a benefit. But if you understand that people will push into option A, even if they go small house, make it weird, then if you are like, I don't need to be that close to the beach, or like none of that matters to me, like what they deem important, then uh, then you can win. The other thing to think about, and I'll let this one ride after this, the other thing to think about is a lot of people look at, they start their search a certain way, right? And I talked about this uh, last Sunday in the Parish A to Z video. Right, we spent a lot of time talking about context. That's a good one if you want a like example of this. But people will start their search like in Lakewood Ranch, for instance, and they think it's all on the table. They're starting like fresh eyed, you know. They're like excited about it, and the forty plus communities, right? They're looking at like the whole things in play, waterside, the whole thing. 
And then what a lot of people do, right? Say you have 500 grand, 600 grand. A lot of people will find out very quickly, like Waterside just doesn't quite work. It doesn't mean there's nothing that's 600K in there, but you'd rather not have a townhome. Like it's, that doesn't right, work for you, right? You're creeping your way up. Uh, lower to middle Lakewood Ranch is a lot of resale that already exists, right? So you might easily find yourself in the upper quadrant, even though you, you, you like thought about it one way at the beginning with your criteria and you end up looking at like Central Park and the, the Esplanade area and Sweetwater and you're, you actually are in the Northeast upmost quadrant of Lakewood Ranch. Well, if you, and you still have in your mind though, you're like, you know, I'm never going to do Parish because Parish is so much further. We're parking schools and education for a moment on the Parish versus Lakewood. Um, but you have in your mind still that old stigma of when you looked it up originally and everyone you spoke to about it, that technically Lakewood Ranch City Center, if you Google it, or even especially the Waterside District, you might be 18 to 25 minutes one way to the beaches and all of Sarasota. And Parrish is not. Parrish is 45, right? You're like, that's a huge difference. Well, what you didn't, you, what a lot of people don't do is step back when they get more involved in their search and say, well, actually the area I'm looking in Lakewood Ranch is... 38 minutes from town, not 20, and Parrish is 42. They're actually not that different, right? So if you would have came into your search originally like that, then how is Parrish not a part of the conversation? Just being in Lakewood Ranch because it's called Lakewood doesn't really have hold a lot of weight up north of State Road 70. So it's the same with kind of like Welland Park. You know, where Welland Park Golf and Country Club is, is basically, Ang I mean, like what is Anglewood versus Northport versus Venice, right? Like I talk about South Venice all the time on these videos and I have a bunch of people that hop in that are like Sarasota locals that are like, this isn't even in Venice. This is this is Northport and all this kind of stuff. But if you take this circle on the map of Western Northport, the Southern part of Venice, not what's called South Venice and Northern Englewood, it's the same, same freaking piece of land. Like what, are, I mean, what are we doing here? It's like, it's a general geography, right? So like park taxes and all this kind of like census districts and that kind of thing, right? If you knew all of the beginning, right? And you just had criteria and you're like, what's in play? You might look at it different. So that's all I would say about the fringe areas, right? Like people, people crap on these areas for lack of better terms um, because they're viewing them like the best of A versus the B area in general, right? But a lot of the B areas you wouldn't be looking at unless you were comparing against tier two or three of option A, not all of option A, because you're not comparing wild blue and water side against parish. You're typically even interested in Parrish because it's closer to your criteria of the part of Lakewood you're interested in, which might not be near as compelling as the lower district would be. So anyway, got passionate there. I'll let that go. Um, but that's my number two. I would just, uh, I would make, I'd make that simpler for you. Just, you know, just say like, how does this make sense to the town? And then looking at it deeply, don't target specific houses in a fringe area without knowing, at least in your mind, what you could get in the other area. Um, just for peace of mind. Okay, I have just two more for you. The last one's really quick. This one I think is really interesting I'm about to speak about now. Um, and it almost I was trying to explain it to someone that asked in our community group. But by the way, you can join the community group, ask specific questions. Typically, I answer in a way more articulate fashion and answer to these questions to individual people. And if it's interesting enough where I thought it would make sense to do in a platform where maybe more people would learn from it or it would help someone or something, then I'll do it here as well. So a lot of this is an offshoot from individual conversations that I make evergreen. But this one, this one, like kind of, it was, it was tricky trying to even explain it to someone. Cause so someone basically asked, again, we're focused on Sarasota here for this video, but someone asked, uh, south of Sarasota. So we're starting below Sarasota city limits, Osprey, Nokomis, Venice, Northern Englewood, basically. Um, it's that conversation. And they asked that they basically said, like, you know, we love, you know, we're empty nesters love lifestyle first communities we play a ton of tennis don't really play golf but like the lifestyle that comes with the tennis golf kind of clubs and are just looking for like what is our best shot at achieving they gave me a list of communities which i'm going to mention what's our best shot of like not almost guaranteeing or at least achieving like a semblance that when we get here and we make this decision that we're going to be around like-minded people that kind of talk like us and think like us as far as like what we want which is not a, not a crazy ask in my opinion but the communities they gave me to work through this, Grand Palm by Neal Communities in the West Villages District, Island Walk by DeValsta, that uh, it's kind of like Talon Preserve is now in Nokomis, but it's the, the one before it. Interesting community. DeValsta is owned by Pulte. Boca Real, which is the old school, uh, mostly Neal community, golf community that's in Englewood, really close to the beach, part of Well and Park, technically. Uh, Toscana Isles, which is D.R. Horton. D.R. Horton's like nice brand. 
but it's uh has lakes as big as waterside in there if you've ever been over there it's like kind of wild like they have a uh, waterfall edge pool in their amenity center really nice amenities it typically doesn't come synonymous with dr horton communities so it's interesting the venetian uh golf and river club which is like really old school venice and uh which is in the nicomas area i think they mentioned wallen park golf and country club as well so if you take all of these communities you know i was working through how i would describe like where you'd find that and i was like you know none of these are similar they all offer something but you know potentially sacrifice something but then i was like a, getting to that point of trying to like be be helpful um and i know these communities well but getting to the point where i was trying to actually be helpful and not just ramble to these folks I was almost like, they're, they're so ambiguous. That is the value. It's polarity. So for instance, right, like Grand Palm, uh, and they sent me actually a home model, right? They sent me a home model that was a Neil community, single story, 2,200 square feet. It was like that prototypical three, two and a half with a den. So I had a good coastal aesthetic. I had a good like idea of what they wanted, right? So I thought of Grand Palm. Grand Palm, I was like, you know, you could easily achieve that with Grand Palm by Neil. It's, and it's unique, right? Really nature-centric. They've been building this community. They're still building actively. And I think they've been building for over 11 or 12 years. So you have like huge mature landscaping. You have these like Neil style housing. They don't even build anymore. So it gives you neighborhood texture. It's not all platted like Woodward. And then you still got new construction mixed in, right? So you got mature, you got new, you got like a lot of things people don't like about new because of lack of maturity. And it's real nature-centric. And you got all that going for you. But like at the same time, you have, you have turnover for 10 plus years in an area that's relatively new. So like you hop in there and trying to divide kid friendly versus, I mean, they'd have tennis and all that, but like trying to say like, you're going to catch your crowd. It's tricky in a community like that because of like the variety of it. Island Walk, Devalsta, one of the most popular communities a long time, like two years ago. It was lovely. Ton of water. I told them, I remember how pumped people were to get into Island Walk. They were so excited. So I was like, you know, that's a community you can grab onto. But again, the amount of resales because of the affordability of that place, not only resales, but probably rentals, which they were seeking to not be in a transient rental community, uh, was just crazy. The amount of things, probably currently on MLS, but definitely in the last, I mean, pretty much everyone that I met was in there is gone, right? So they made equity, they left, they're probably in other parts of Welland. So, and then it's a normal community. So that's the best way to describe it. Nice, normal amenities, right? I wouldn't say it's super kid friendly. I would just say like, I don't know if it's going to be your tennis golf crowd necessarily as far as social. Boca Royale would be definitely one way to, to, to achieve it because you got, it's an old school club. It's very, very private feeling. Like people really like latch onto that. Like it definitely people that uh, are down there chose it because it's in Englewood. You can still do like nice newer construction because of the Neil element in there. So you got a lot of those elements. It's the golf. So you got a built-in social thing. You got all that. But then at the same time, you're going one to an older community for the most part. Um, and you're going very far south. So if you're going to take a sacrifice, you gain beach proximity because you get that far south. But that's the one in Welland Park that I would say, like, it's a stretch to call that Welland. It's more of a branded play. I don't know if you want to lose the whole Playmore district by choosing that, right? So you got goods and bads, right? Where, like, again, it's is it easier or harder if they're so different? I don't know. Toscana Isles is great. Great amenities. I don't think you got a, I don't think you got, like, a club social community in there like that. DR Horton's like a spec builder. So that would be one I don't know. And it's in North Venice, which I love location for proximity to Sarasota. But as far as like what they were seeking, I I, I don't think that that kind of fits the mold, but interesting to explore. It's going to be interesting more in a minute here. Venice Golf and River, it got a lot of the elements they want as far as socially, but it's old school N Nokomis. So great location. I mean, Nokomis is so underrated for proximity to like both Nokomis Beach and Venice and not that far from both Casey Key and Siesta. But uh, to guarantee a community, the older you get, I think it's trickier. People have been there forever. I don't know if hard to break into, but it would be like transferring schools when you're a senior in high school, right? A little harder to do. And then also harder on the surface to know what you're getting. Like, I don't know what you're going to get. And it'd be hard to guarantee it. So with all of that being said, what I would say, and this is where I like in general, is if you're going to try to guarantee something like this without with not knowing how to do that, right? No one's going to tell you. So if I had to hedge my bets, I would go for lifestyle-based, um, a technically lifestyle on paper-based community. And I'd add one more element, right? So Boca Royale is a golf community that has social golf elements built into deeded memberships, right? That's one one. Welland Park Golf and Country Club is another one. You know, if you want to say that, yeah, Welland Park is Lennar. Um, it's like Sarasota National was, right? It's Lennar. So it's a spec builder. 
They stay in their lane. They do what they always are going to do. So if you love like a higher end Neil or something like, I mean, Neil's not a custom builder, but if you like that, well, it might be a little bit pared down for you, but um, is gaining the location of Welland Park Golf and Country Club and then just being like, okay, I, I, that makes sense to me, right? It's a new club. Um, you know, for all that Lennar is, as far as the way they build the spec houses and the inventory based housing, they, their amenities are unbelievable on what they've done with the golf communities. Lovely stuff. Like Lakewood National, I mean, their two golf courses at Lakewood National are like in the top five of um, a lot of the rankings in golf in Sarasota. Um, Sarasota National, I mean, they're beautiful. Like, you don't walk in there and think that it's lesser than Espinata Zario, in my opinion. Um, a lot of people will go in there, they'll, they'll rip out, they'll, they'll say, like, just build it the way you're going to build it, they'll rip out the counters, rip out the floors, they'll redo it, and, they, and then it works out for them. Or they'll just be like, it is what it is, right? I'm going to, like, not make it weird. So that's a way to do it. 55 and up's another way to do it. So if you can get a 55 up, a Dell Web or something like that, that would be another way to say, like, it's not guaranteeing everybody's going to be 55 and older necessarily. It's just saying that. What's the chances that these people fit what I'm looking for? A lot of people choose active adult living because of that. It's like, you know, David Salkin on my team at the Sunshine State Company always talks about, you know, when he moved from New Jersey, it's like being a freshman in high school again. It's another high school example, I guess. But he's saying like, it's basically like, you know, the thing that it, it, we don't know anyone, but also most people that are moving there are looking for similar. So they're trying to find out where they fit and all that kind of thing. If you go to a lifestyle-based 55 and up community that on paper, that's all they're talking about, then there's probably a better shot that a lot of people are going to be similar to you more than not. So with all of that being said, if I was going south of Sarasota looking for the perfect part of that and I don't need golf, I think one of the best examples of all time right now is Brightmore by Mattamy. It's 55 and up. It's the best of the best of the best, potentially, of what these folks are looking for for the price point. Because if I'm going to go in Venice in general, just like the Sarasota Sky, Sky Ranch conversation, is what's the best of the new Venice and the old Venice? So Venice is known for downtown Venice, which is Venice Island, uh, which is technically not a barrier island. So if it's, it just feels a lot more coastal in Venice overall because the gulf to the, the mainland is closer. And then they have three beaches there. They have Venice Beach, they have Casper Sand, the shark's tooth capital of the world in a lot of people's eyes, Brohard, which is the only dog beach in the county. And then Manasota Key, because of like where the southern part's based, Manasota Key in the Englewood conversation really have like four proper beaches that are almost the same distance. Because like you go this way to Venice, like Welland Park's here, inland, 18 minutes. Manasota's here. It's like that because it's very far south, right? So it almost sneaks you into four beaches. Um, and if and then Sarasota's like 45 minutes one way downtown. Uh, I'd want that. And then the best part of the new Venice, just like Waterside, is downtown Welland. It's not all of Welland Park. It's the Playmore District of Welland, which gives you downtown Welland, which is a beautiful new downtown, brand new. It's open to the public. And it also gives you Cool Today Park, which is spring training uh, baseball complex, technically, for the Braves. Braves, yeah. Um, but they do a ton of live events. I think it's like 300 plus live events during normal seasonality. And they have a tiki bar that's open all year round. So you got all of that kind of stuff. One of the most golf cart friendly places in the whole state of Florida next to the villages in Central Florida. And so... If you could get everything you wanted and also be popped in there, the neighborhood you want, and also be around all the rest, that's really what you want. You want all of it. And Bright More by Madden Me gives you a 55 and up. It gives you a little higher end housing technically than Lennar probably. It's kind of comparable to Neil, not Neil's signature, but it's not that far off. Brand, brand new. Uh, pickleball, like crazy. You got tennis, you got all that kind of stuff. Doesn't have golf, but it's active adult living. And adding... Adding the community being brand spanking new means that you're not the only person trying to figure this out, right? So everyone that's coming in, if you can deal with the, the timeline of the build, everyone coming in is probably going to be like really close to what you're trying to also figure out. So if I'm looking for close as I get to a guarantee, that would be kind of my proof case. And everything else will be branching off from that. Welland Park Golf and Country Club adds a lot of those elements, but different community. Um, there's other things you could do within that. There's boutique. There's custom. And then there's public amenities, right? So they had mentioned that we could live in one and go to the other. I think that's a great avenue as well. But um, I think that's what would be compelling for me if I was working through it. And by trying to work through it, you learn pretty much everything you need to know about um, Nokomis, Osprey, North Fork, Englewood, which is uh, all of the cities beyond Sarasota and Sarasota County. So um, that's what I'd say about that. All right, my fourth and final one, if you've made it all the way with us thus far, and I appreciate you if you did, is kind of a random one-off. I was just asked a question I thought it was interesting enough to include because of the comparisons and the price point. So I had a gentleman that reached out and said that he had looked at the villages, which I like 
it's a, a thing on its own. If you haven't explored it, you should check it out. It's uh, in Central Florida, and it's a city. It's a city on its own. It is its own thing. It's its own animal. The best way to describe it, I believe, it's technically the fastest selling master plan that exists. He looked at on top of the world, which is different than the villages for sure, but similar kind of concept of inland retirement, especially. Um, both both provide like forced communal amenities and these kind of things, like minded people potentially different neighborhoods that satiate similar environment. And then he also explored the Atlantic coast, which is a lot cheaper overall than Southwest Florida, um, north of Vero Beach, south of Ponte Vedra, like Daytona, that kind of area, area. He was looking at um, culture, uh, homes, 55 and up communities. Doesn't need golf, but like likes that, clearly likes the amenity rich lifestyle that involves not having to be in just one neighborhood, like more than that, right? And now he's open to Southwest Florida. Um, and I wanted to know what, how I would start that search and what I would do. And if I use new construction as an example, and then work my way back price point was 375 to 550 and didn't want to really go to 550. So it really becomes like a kind of a simple conversation. If you really try to stick to that plan and, and you're open to not just specifically being single families, if possible, just to broaden your horizons, I would do two things simply right off the bat. And it would, it'd be a great way to learn Sarasota quickly. I would go directly to the area I just spoke about. I would look at. Um, the southern part of Venice, like that western north for the Playmore district of Welland Park on the map. I would look at Playmore district in Welland Park, and I would compare it against the northeast quadrant of Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Communities I would do to compare that, based on this criteria, is I would immediately go after Brightmore. Brightmore is that 55 and up. Mattamy is, um, it's very, very new, and you get some introductory pricing. And Mattamy is known to be a relatively affordable builder, even versus Neil or Taylor Morrison. They stay kind of in that realm. They also have pair villas and small single families on 40 foot fr front planes. So in my mind, under 550 is, seems really feasible, but you get crazy amenities. And what I would fight to do if I could is I'd fight to go, you don't want to make it weird, right? So if you get a villa versus a single family, you want to get a benefit for doing the villa because it is attached. You have a lot of restrictions when it comes to like what you can do in the backyard, stuff like, you know, some shared amenities too. But you know, if you could choose a single family, would you just for resale? So I'd look at that, but you don't want a weird, you don't want a weird single family just to say it's a single family, right? So look at that, but Brightmore and Welland's a great example. And then I would immediately go, and then and then you got the Playmore district and all that. I'll talk about it in a second. But then I would go up to the Northeast quadrant, not just randomly, because that's really important if you get up there, right? Because you're not in Waterside. And I would look at Star Farms and maybe uh, the new Del Webb Cat Catalina. So Star Farms is D.R. Horton mostly, um, D.R. Horton's parent company. And then custom builders mixed in. So they build like $200,000 to three plus million, depending on who you get. But Star Farms is going to be a entire concept of tiered amenities. It's like, and schools and everything. So it's going to be like a, a city within a city. And then Del Webb Catalina, Del Webb is known to be an amenity rich brand. So if you went to an area that didn't have its own downtown separate, then it's, it makes an argument for not needing to really leave the community because it offers everything. It's the newest of the Del Webbs freshest amenities, all that kind of thing. And because of the location and because that they do do small single families, do do, sorry, small single families, and they do the alternative non-single family housing, I do think you could catch the price points. But the idea here would be to really hone in on cities within cities, your neighborhood and your individual house. What could you get in addition to that when you leave your driveway in the community? Um, and when you leave the community close by. So what more value could you get outside the individual home? And I think that could satiate the, the, the tug you got from the villages and that kind of thing, right? Because Playmore, you know, you could have someone that lives in, you know, a three million or $2 million house in another community um, and be a mile from you or less. And you guys share the same kind of lifestyle outside of your community, but what you needed within it was different. That's what I would lean into for that conversation. Um, and then if you were like, okay, I like this or that or not this or that about these ideas, then then you could start unraveling the rest of Sarasota, the Venice, the fringes, all that kind of stuff with borderline too much information. If you just MLS search this concept, you wouldn't even it wouldn't make sense. It just doesn't it doesn't make economic value. So I would I would use new construction as a talking head to learn the area. Um, and then if I had to choose all was equal, as far as like, you want even more macro than that, I think Southwest Florida, if I, on a map is just beats the other ones, you know, I would choose, I mean, Atlantic, I get the Atlantic coast is cheaper. I think Southwest Florida is a better location. Uh, you get up in Ponte Vedra. That's very far North. It's almost Jacksonville. 
panhandle beyond the hurricane and the low lying land. Uh, as much as I love, I really love the panhandle. That's where I went to college. Uh, uh, it's it's a fringe. It's it's basically it's more Alabama than it is Florida. And um, yeah, inland is not coastal, right? So like I think if you had to choose Southwest Florida winds, Sarasota versus Naples versus Tampa, you narrow down there, and then uh, yeah, and it all starts to make sense. And it's one big puzzle that has the same kind of overall value. So that's what I'd say there. All right, my friend, that is a wrap for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Adam Hancock, and this is the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel. We view the smartest way to buy, sell, and or invest in the entire state of Florida. Um, if you enjoyed it and you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. This is just one, if, if you happen to be unfortunate to catch this as your first view into any videos we've done, this is just one style. Uh, we focus really uh, deeply into Southwest Florida, mostly. Tampa Bay, Sarasota, and Naples Greater, all the areas that surround that. But we really do cover Florida as a whole. We service Florida as a whole. But we have a lot of styles in which we do so. So I'm trying to satiate a need of information if you're way up here or you're way down here. If you're trying to choose Sarasota versus Pensacola versus Jacksonville versus Miami, you know, all that conversation, we do videos like that. If you are wanting to know the best neighborhoods within one metro, we do that. We have 60 minute long deep dives that involve one neighborhood or one city. And then we have random stuff where I try to take questions that people ask me individually and I do stuff like that too. So wherever you're at in the search, we try to do that. And if you look through the channel deep enough, then you could hopefully satiate those needs. I own a brokerage that's on the back of this concept called the Sunshine State Company, if you haven't realized this peacock here, um, that uh, we have offices in Sarasota, Tampa, and Naples, and we serve the whole state of Florida. So if we can help you in any way, we have a really unique team that takes this information that I really focus on full-time researching. And you know, we try to, we say the smartest because we try to focus on economics and we want you to win both on money and on lifestyle. But we have a team that's right on the back of that. Now we almost match make. So you get me, you get the broker and you get a concierge agent. It's really just focused on you and also fits your style, right? Either relocated to the neighborhood you're trying to get to three years before you, um, is an empty nester, you're an empty nester. Just got kids in school, you know, you you are that is young, young professional. We have you know, everything like that, right? Mom, mom, military, Spanish speaking, all that kind of stuff. So we really try, again, we're trying to make the best mousetrap of value for you. So check our website out, thesunshinestateco.com. You can go to the about page and you can check it out like as an example. Uh, what else? Uh, free downloads. We have relocation guides for Sarasota, Tampa, and Naples that are updated. We have analytical tools that uh, I rank neighborhoods and do stuff like that, that basically lets you like, Take a free spreadsheet and see what are the most popular neighborhoods, how much they cost, what are the taxes, average size house, average age house. We have uh, just a, a parish updated, uh, Sarasota Manatee Greater that has the whole thing. Uh, we have a Venice that's updated. Um, we just added Spanish. Um, we're going to have actually a separate YouTube thing that uh, basically is videos I'm doing that will be um, a Spanish version by a native Spanish speaker on our team, uh, Maria. So if that um, is someone that you both want to work with or it's easier for you to consume or you prefer to consume in uh, if you're a native Spanish speaker, we're going to have that. We already have on the website uh, Sarasota and Tampa guides that I built that are in Spanish. So check that out. We have a private community group that's just exclusive to people that are members of this YouTube channel. It's completely free. Uh, the link is in the description box below. You just basically request it with your email and your name. And I'm the moderator. I let you in. And this is somewhere where um, we discuss random stuff. But the biggest benefit probably is that you can DM me whenever you want, ask specific questions that maybe you either are too far in the search where you're uncomfortable, like reaching out to our organization or you think are too narrow or you just want my personal opinion. And most of the time, within three to four days or under, I will answer these to you. Um, Personally, with like a, I try to do a voice memo, so I, I I just basically send you a audio clip of my answer, so it's more it's more close to this or closer to this versus me typing it. I uh, really appreciate you get guys watching. Uh, thanks for all the support as always, and we will see you on the next video.